What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 130 of the Stand Up Guys podcast. I'm your host, the incomparable Zach Jones, and I'm joined, as always, by my brother from the same mother, Lester Jones. It's me, Lester. And, of course, it wouldn't be our show if we didn't have the ninth wonder, Chocolate Thunder, eating that stink eye and getting that pink eye, lover of the vag and the tarnished sheriff's badge. He's got two for the pink, one for the stink, tattooing the ladies with his Indian ink, the phenomenal A.J. Singh. Uh, that's my middle name. Uh, I appreciate you saying the whole thing properly. <laughs> Most people don't get it right. All right, guys. You guys do anything interesting this week? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Just working. I don't yeah. remember doing anything interesting. Okay, what did you guys watch? Let's get to it. I'll let you go first. <laughs> I watched a season of uh, Alice in Borderland on Netflix, which uh, it was decent. Now explain the general premise of that show, because I walked in on a, like a weird scene, and I was like, I don't know what's going on here. There's like a naked guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's like this. Yeah, you did the classic walk in on the in the awkward part uh so there's something that happens and you don't know if it's like aliens or like some government conspiracy or something but like a handful of people get pulled out of tokyo and put into this like identical version but there's only a handful there but they're forced to play like these death games and like if they win one of the games they get like a, a reprieve where they can go a few days without playing another game or something and so they're they're constantly being forced to play these games, and so that's pretty much every episode. You have some death game, but kind of like a squid game. Yeah, yeah, it it's in that neighborhood. Uh, I've been watching uh, bad movie reviews mostly, and it's just a <laughs> bunch of '80s trash. <laughs> like, uh, what was the last one I just watched? Like Zapped or something. <laughs> Well, uh, there's this uh, channel. This guy named Wang Wang, who's like in <laughs> nice these, name. Yeah, he was uh, or Wen Wen. He was in these uh, 1980s, 70s movies. He was like a, a little person, and uh, he did karate and stuff and like action stuff, you know. <laughs> so he was like the big star, and all the women fell in love with him and everything. And it was just hilarious watching that movie and trying to take it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've never heard of this guy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where he's uh, popular. I I mean, he was in some American stuff, too. I don't know. Uh, yeah. just uh, It's just a weird time, the 80s, man. Like, it seems like they were just pumping out movies, and they were all really silly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, they're still making those kinds of movies. There's one called uh, Champagne Bullets, I think, or Champagne and Bullets. And it's this guy's, uh, like his own personal project just to make himself look good. And he just has like women and he's, he's killing people and he's like the guy. It's basically like people recreating Steven Seagal, you know, like his whole image and everything, like how he's like <laughs> the man. It's nuts. But yeah, it's fun watching people's egos, you know, play on screen. I know like, um, like I've mentioned before, I listened to that Quentin Tarantino podcast, and he said he thought like the '80s were largely terrible as far as like the mainstream movies that were coming out. I think everybody was on drugs in the '80s. Well, he he said that like he thought like he he loves like the '70s because he said it was very experimental, and like he even said the '90s were like a good time for like indie film and experimental film. But like something about the movies coming out in the '80s, they, he thought they were just like dumbed uh, down. Yeah, cause... exactly just pushing out like garbage for people to eat up yeah you're right the 70s it seemed like there was more like artistic you know uh I adventure in there like uh even weird even bad movies like zardoz like it, it's like this uh sean connery movie i think uh I, I I know of it, and I've seen that picture okay. of him. Okay. Because uh, I think they did do it on How Did This Get Made. Yeah. Is that like the red bikini strap thing? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It sounded uh -huh. like a very strange movie. Yeah, it is very strange. And, uh, you know, it's still like you got to give props to them trying to do what they did with that movie, you know? So, yeah, I think the, the 70s people were still finding their way with film in a way, and they were still trying to do, like, unique things. And in the 80s, they just found a, a formula, and everybody just went with it. 
Have you ever like actually tried to watch Zardoz like yourself? Or no, I have not watched it by myself. Because like listening to them break it down on how did this get made, I was like, I'm not even sure they knew what it was about. <laughs> I, I've seen like parts of the movie because I saw somebody else break it down also. Uh, it, it's wild. It's wild. Uh, but I kind of, I I get where they were going with that. You know, like I see what they were trying to do, but it's just the way the whole. It doesn't look as good as it was maybe in their ideas, in their minds. I've never cared for those, like, really abstract, like, fever dream no? movies. Okay. Nah, they just... But you watched Legion, and that's, like, so abstract and fever dream. Yeah, and... I don't know. Legion was one of those shows that did get too much like that at times for me. But then I feel like every time it got, like, too far in that direction, they would then, like, start to explain stuff and kind okay. of bring it back down. So, like, it never got too much for me, but... Mm. There were times in Legion where I was like, okay, it's going out on a limb a little bit yeah. too much here. But, um, yeah, it, I, I thought Legion did a pretty good job of balancing that stuff. All right. But I don't know. Just, like, so, sometimes that stuff does annoy me, though. Okay, yeah. What was that black and white movie you were watching yesterday? Oh, yeah, I watched the uh, Carnival of Souls. Oh, I've seen that. <laughs> That's <laughs> horrible. Like, it wasn't. It wasn't very good. But I was just looking for something, anything. You See know? that scene where they have that monkey like slamming or right. <laughs> symbols together. Is it like a horror movie? What is well, it? Well, the whole thing is like in the beginning. There's like um, two cars that are like street racing or whatever, and like this girl's car goes off the bridge, and there's three girls in it, and like she comes out of the river, and the other two girls don't, and like she's wandering through the whole movie, and there's a, she's like seeing like ghosts and stuff and then you know the big twist at the end is like she's dead <laughs> mm. oh the old six sense twist before <laughs> the six sense so yeah that one was great i watched devil in a blue dress with denzel washington that was pretty good that's the other one i was going to mention because i know you you talked about it i've heard that title before but i i have no idea what it's about yeah yeah it's a it's a noir noir Am I saying that right? Noir. <laughs> Noir. <yeah. laughs> Struggling. <laughs> yeah, but... Um, yeah, it, it's just... Um, basically, Denzel, one day, he gets uh, approached by this white investigator, and he wants him to go looking for this white woman. But, like, it's in the black part of town, so, like, he won't do it. He doesn't want to do it himself. And so he gets Denzel to go down there and do it, and it's, like, this whole big conspiracy and and you know typical aspects of a noir you'd expect but uh pretty good so there is there like a, a femme fatale in a blue dress yeah the woman he's looking for is the woman in the blue dress who, who plays her um I'm, i don't know her name oh i don't know if i've ever seen her before like how old is this movie like a 90s movie it's probably 80s or 90s okay i don't think i ever heard of that one I don't know. Denzel was pretty young. It also had um, uh, Don Cheadle, very young. So oh. yeah, maybe the eighties. Mm, Eighty seems too early. Maybe I'm wrong. It, yeah, I'm not a hundred percent. Well, I don't know. Like, I don't know when Denzel started. Maybe the eighties. You could be right. Uh, uh, the name of the movie makes me think that she was up to something nefarious. <laughs> you know? Devil in the blue dress. I feel like I already know the ending. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a trope of a lot of noirs, is you got the, the femme fatale, mm. the beautiful woman that ends up like bringing the yeah. guy down because she's no good. Or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> she brings the case to him, then he solves it, and then she does that one last thing right, at the end. Right. <laughs> uh, anything else of note you watched? Um, I don't remember anything else. <laughs> there might have been. Man, I didn't really watch anything new. Um, just as a background show, I had kind of been putting on like the last season of American Dad. Just you know, something to kind of watch when I I'm used working to watch out that. or whatever. You know. Yeah. Um, I rewatched um, uh, Carnival Row season one because the second season's about to start on Amazon. That's a good show. At least I really like season one. We'll see. What do they do in that show? So basically the the premise of the show is like um, humans 
Well, like, there's magical creatures, like, in this world, like, and humans. And, like, magical creatures are, like, there's a class of, like, what they call picks, which is, like, have wings and can fly. And then there's, like, other ones that kind of have, like, um, um, like ram horns on their head. And there's, like, all kinds. But basically, there was a war between these two human factions. And um, they were kind of a the magical creatures got caught in the middle. But anyway, at the end of that war, basically there's this town called the Berg where like the humans and, and the magical like beings kind of have to coexist. And there's like a lot of racism towards the, the magical folk. Really? You know? Yeah. Man, they're magical. <laughs> they seem cool. <laughs> uh, but basically Orlando Bloom, he pays, he plays like this uh, inspector that uh, um, used to, like he fought in the war and in that time like he fell in love with uh, a magical woman yeah. you know and then um so, so like uh, there, there's there's kind of like a central murder mystery that he's involved in but it it, it also like the show like uh you know there, there's like so there's that mystery element you got the fantasy element you got like some uh, political stuff going on too, and like the social commentary. Um, but yeah, it's hard to like get real deep into like the show. Like, I don't want to spoil anything, but it's good. Like, I would say, like, if you like, I mean, I'm not even a big fantasy guy, and and but like, I like this show quite a bit. Some weird question just popped into my head. Sure, like uh, they're racist towards people who have magic. Like, uh, in the X-Men, they are also, like, racist towards mutants. Right. Like, if you ever got powers, would you ever tell anybody? Because <laughs> I thought I would tell everybody. I'd be like, man, I can fly. Look at this. This is amazing. I mean, that's the thing that doesn't really hold up in the X-Men, like, over time. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it was a good idea to be like, oh, like, you know, uh, the X-Men are uh, analogs for, like, gay people mm -hmm. and, like, black people, yeah. and, you know. And... and like in the 60s or whatever, it was a novel concept. But then I think these days were like, yeah, we would just be like, oh, you got powers. Yeah, like, we'd be jealous. That's, yeah, it's like really cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess we would be nervous of like some people that have like really strong powers. Yeah, like, like reality and altering. like Yeah, like Charles Xavier, like, you know, like yeah. mind altering stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't know if... if and also, like, it's silly in Marvel that, like, everybody hates mutants, but, like, they're okay with Captain America and, like, yeah, the Avengers. the Avengers, and, Hulk. Uh, yeah, all these other people that are basically mutants in a, in a way, even though they're not technically mutants, you know. But, I mean, that's similar to also, like, what Lex Luthor, Lex Luthor thinks of uh, Superman, right? He's like, this guy shouldn't have all this power. So, like, he sees him as a threat to humanity, right? Yeah. But in the Marvel Universe, like... If they saw the X-Men as a threat, they should see all superpower yeah, people as a true. threat and yeah. kind of hate them, you know? Yeah, yeah. maybe they should just lay that down, even though it was a very strong theme. It was. Like, yeah. it, it was a good idea. It's just, I think, yeah, I think that its day is kind of set. Yeah, it's like, why the Avengers? Why not them? Yeah. Yeah. And then I also uh, rewatched Blade Runner 2049, which is just, I think, one of the best movies, like, from the last 10 years or you know, so is Ryan Reynolds in that one? Not Ryan Reynolds, uh, Ryan Gosling. Oh, okay, right, right. Yeah. And man, what a movie! Like, it's one of those movies that I'm like, I, I'm pretty sure it wasn't nominated for like any of the major Oscars, and like that to me feels like a snub. Like, like it definitely should have been like a Best Picture, Best Director nominee. I mean, it might have been nominated for like those technical awards, you know. But I don't know. Like, I think it was definitely a, a short-changed movie. I, I think it's great. Yeah, I'm surprised. Uh, I didn't really hear much about it myself, to be honest. Like, uh, just I heard the, the release, but nobody was like raving about it or anything. Yeah, it, I mean, I people. I think people that like sci-fi like know it's great, but like, it, it is one of those movies that I, I, for whatever reason, I don't think it caught on. Hmm. I think it probably because I think the original Blade Runner, which I don't think is a great movie. It has, like, a cult following. Like, there's a relatively small amount of people that really love it or whatever. So I think just, like, when this movie came out, like, a lot of people were like, well, I never watched the first one. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to watch this one, which no. is a mistake, you know? Because um, I, don't, I don't really think you had to watch the first one to watch mm -hmm. this. Like, 
there are callbacks to it, and like Harrison Ford's character is definitely like the biggest part. But like, I, I you can totally watch this movie without watching the first one if you want. Okay. Unfortunately, I won't be able to watch Ant Man because I didn't see the the first one. <laughs> and now you got to watch those. <laughs> you have time. You have a week. <laughs> By the way, we will be uh, reviewing uh, Quantumania on the show for those interested. I think the most interesting part of Quantumania is uh, who's the the black actor. I like him quite a bit. Oh, Jonathan Majors. Jonathan Majors. He's in great shape right now. For yeah, because he did that Creed movie. Yeah. He's one of those guys that just like. It's funny, like some people just like explode in popularity. Like one day you're like, oh, I guess this person is a thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was that episode with uh, in Loki for me. Once I saw him play, uh, you know, the whatever he who remains, I was like, yeah, I like this guy. That's the first time I ever seen him. Yeah, yeah, I think I uh, my first was the Lovecraft Country. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I never which saw is that. Great, I'm so disappointed that it was canceled, but. Yeah, I heard people love that show, but then like the fact that it was canceled makes me not really want to watch it. Mm. I think first season standalone enough. Is but, it? But yeah, still disappointing. And then uh, this isn't something like a watch, but I decided um, it, I was going to read it anyway. But uh, you know, when we talked about DC uh, last week, like there's that Tom King comic Supergirl World of Tomorrow, which I guess they're kind of basing the movie they're doing off of so i decided uh, to read that pretty good uh basically the premise is like supergirl like um she she's on this like planet like basically basically like celebrating her like 21st birthday like getting drunk <laughs> and like um while she's there like this teenage girl her uh dad like her family's poor they're like farmers or whatever you know and like her dad's murdered by this outlaw and uh, so this girl, like, tries to basically employ Supergirl to, like, kill this guy and, like, avenge her father. And and so, like, um, she says no, but, like, the outlaw guy ends up, like, stealing Supergirl's ship. And so, like, the whole course of, like, each issue is them, like, trying to, like, follow this guy. And, like, usually that guy leaves leave some sort of destruction in his wake that they have to deal with, you know, and until eventually they catch up with him. But, uh, yeah, it, it was pretty good. I would recommend it to people. Um, boom. You guys got anything uh, else you want to talk about? Things you've been watching? Good. Yeah, nothing I'm remembering nothing. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping for more just because I, ha- I had trouble fighting. Like, it's been a couple, like, slow news yeah. weeks. And so I was like, uh, I don't have any, like, uh, stories I'm loving. So... But, but hopefully you guys do. Cause, so uh, are you guys ready to get into story time? Sure. Uh, so anybody who hasn't watched or listened, we're going to go around the table. Everybody will bring a, a topic of conversation from around the globe. And we'll see if we can't just make something funny and or entertaining out of it. And as tradition dictates, AJ, we usually start with you. So what do you got for us? I've heard of this story before, but I thought this was just interesting. I'm always fascinated by it. Rare cancer causes man to develop an Irish accent despite not having any Irish heritage. <laughs> I, I saw this headline. Like, it, it is, I have heard of these stories, yeah. you know, happening to people. It, it's, it, it's interesting, yeah. yeah. An American man who has no Irish heritage whatsoever started to develop an Irish-sounding <laughs> accent all of a sudden because of his prostate cancer. The man, a cancer patient in his 50s, suddenly came out sounding as as if he was from Ireland and continued to talk that way for the rest of his life. Strange as it may sound, these things do happen. It's called Foreign Accent Syndrome, FAS for short, and is a rare speech disorder that causes people to, you've guessed it, speak with a foreign sounding accent, seemingly for no reason. Their pronunciation starts to mirror that of another accent, with the whole thing leaving that person with a completely different sounding voice. There's no reason for this, but it usually linked is usually linked to strokes or brain trauma. Uh, the American man suddenly developed an Irish accent, uh, Irish brogue, despite not having any Irish in him. Uh, uh, this is the first time it has been specifically linked to prostate cancer. Uh, it's such an unusual and medically confusing case that it was written about in a well-respected BMJ journal. Uh, the case study explains a man in his 50s with met- metastatic uh, hormone-sensitive prostate cancer, uh, receiving androgen deprivation therapy and abit- abiteron acetate prednisone, 
uh, presented with an uncontrollable Irish brogue uh, accent despite not, no Irish background, consistent with foreign accent syndrome. He has no neurological examina- He had no neurological examination abnorm- abnormalities, uh, psychiatric history, or MRI of the brain abnormalities at uh, symptom onset. Uh, that abstract also reveals that the man eventually died from his cancer, but also that his FAS as a result of the cancer was a previously undescribed phenomenon. The case continues. His presentation was most consistent with an underlying perineoplastic neurological disorder. Um, despite a negative serum perineoplastic panel. Perineoplastic syndromes are rare disorders that happen when a person's immune system reacts to the cancerous tumors known as neoplasms and attack the brain, spinal cord, and nervous system. Uh, there are a number of symptoms that can be linked with PND, including loss of balance, brain inflammation, psych- All right, so, I mean, the main thing here is that a strange, like, a, a an unconnected part of the body, prostate cancer, made his accent change, like... That's the first time that's ever happened. But, I mean, I've heard of people going through this before, but it's weird. Like I, I always try to make a funny sketch if, like, somebody got this, but they developed, like, a really offensive, like, you know, Stephen Colbert, Ching Chong, Ding Dong, oh, like, yeah. <laughs> Chinese <laughs> accent or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, like, they, they, they take it seriously, but it's, like, so over the top. <laughs> it's like, hero. <laughs> They're like, what? This is just who I am. <laughs> <laughs> I think that has potential for a pretty good sketch. Yeah, idea. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> it, what the the thing is is like I don't like even if I try to do an accent, like I can't do any accents like well. Right. So it's like I I do wonder like this guy with the Irish accent, like is it a good Irish accent? Right. Right. Like, is it a like, convincing one? Yeah. Or is he just like faking it? This is <laughs> awful. And they're like, I guess that's Irish. It's sometimes Jamaican. It's <laughs> very inconsistent. <laughs> yeah. If you get if this happened to you, what accent would you want to wake up with? Ooh, Australian. That's a good accent. I think I yeah Australia. I think I would probably go with either British or Irish though, or Scottish or Scottish. <laughs> yeah, all in there. Those are all good ones, man. Mm, I don't know. I I think I might go with Italian just because uh, I think the ladies would like that <laughs> Italian accent. <laughs> I'd go with the super sexy like Swedish. Hergen <laughs> <laughs> Hergen <Hurricane> flirt. <laughs> I had a training video the other day, and like the actors were Swedish, and I was like, "This is weird." <laughs> <laughs> I think I would go like I want to like old school Irish, like on Banshees of Vanishare, and like I want to talk like those guys, <laughs> so nobody can understand you. Yeah. <laughs> or you could do like uh, Brad Pitt's character on Snatch, just like nobody can understand. <laughs> I've heard that the Welsh accent is a really tough one to understand. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've heard people say it sounds like they have like a sing-song type voice. But I don't know if that's when they're speaking Welsh or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, Should we uh, dive into this week's manifesto, round one? All right. Uh, Steve Wozniak of Apple... Um, he says Elon Musk is dishonest and he misled uh, Tesla buyers. And he says they robbed my family of so much. So I saw this headline, but I didn't read it, so I didn't know exactly what it was about. So apparently he bought a Tesla, you know, sold on the um, idea that Musk is saying it's like a full self-driving car. And, and basically he said, like, they're not as close as they say they are. Uh, here's his quote. This is his quote about driving in a Tesla. It mi- makes mistakes all the time. It's a horrible, frightening experience. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, <laughs> you can't argue with that. But um, yeah, basically, he's just saying, uh, you know, he's not honest. He, he's just selling things as big as he can, and it's just not true. It's just not the reality of the situation which i've never been in a tesla so i don't know i've ridden one in an uber 
but not self drive. He didn't. He didn't slap on the self driving. I'm actually not sure. I would have asked him to do it. If you ever get another one, be like, hey, can you do the self driving so I can see what happens? That was the last we ever saw. Him. Yeah. Can, can we see what happens? <laughs> I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> Just make sure you buckle. Up. You know, if it worked well though, like that would make Ubering like really easy. Yeah. Just set it and forget it and make your money. Well, that's another thing. Like he said, hey. If, you know, if you own one of these, you could probably just set it to run errands and and make maybe like thirty grand a year or something. And so, but also like apparently, like he was talking about like a Tesla fleet of like self driving taxis, and he's just kind of like stop talking about that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it will happen eventually. They'll yeah. work these kinks out, but it'll take yeah. a while. Apparently, it's still some issues. I have seen a couple of those videos where, like, a Tesla stopped itself and, like, cars crashed right in front of it. Those, And I'm kind of like, well, that would be kind of nice. But I also saw a video of, like, you know how they, they have, like, the high end of the sports car one? And, like, apparently the acceleration on electric vehicles is crazy. And he was trying to make a very fast car. And he said, like, the engine's probably still good, but, like... Like, all the finishes was, like, he could just, like, pull stuff off with his hands, and it just wasn't, you know, you don't want to pay, like, a quarter of a million dollars for something mm-hmm. that's falling apart, like, out of the box. Oh, I was just listening to a podcast today. So, apparently, like, uh, not too long ago, like, there was a story where, like, um, a family was in a Tesla, and it went off a cliff. And, like, they were claiming... Our, I think the guy claimed that it, it was in autopilot mode and it was like Tesla's fault, you know? Yeah. But then, like, the wife, like, dropped a dime on the husband. Like, he said something like, you know, I'm tired of this life or whatever. And, like, he actually, uh, like, intended on killing, like, his whole family by, like, driving off the cliff. But they survived. It's like, holy shit. Man, why'd she snitch? She could have gotten money. <laughs> I mean, they might have been able to prove it if they, because I, I assume like there's probably some sort of logs it makes when it's in the auto. Uh, yeah, it does record and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. But um, I've also heard like rumors that he's been oppressing like, you know, those stories where Teslas do have accidents from Twitter. Oh, like, yeah, I heard that too. <laughs> I, and I'm sure he does. So yeah, not all free speech and bubbles over there, I guess. Yeah, you know, like. He's going to use Twitter to like, or, you know, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't want it to make him look worse than it already does sometimes. Mm-hmm. I, I have seen people post like, you know, several posts where like Elon Musk said something and then like it did that Twitter thing where it's like, this lacks context or this isn't exactly true yeah. or whatever to his own post, you know? <laughs> yeah, I've seen that too. <laughs> I heard he like recently fired one of his engineers because like he wasn't getting as much engagement as he wanted, and the engineer told him that you're just not as popular as you were, <laughs> and he was like, "No, that's not good. No, I'm gonna fire you." <laughs> uh, any more on that one? Ah, uh, no. Well, I, like I said, like I was having trouble finding any good uh, news stories this week, so I thought I would do a round of "Would you rather." You guys want to do that? Sure. Um, this isn't like period blood and. A gallon of your dad's semen again. <laughs> <laughs> no, these ones are a, l- <laughs> a little easier. Um, number one, would you rather the aliens that make first contact be robotic or organic? I mean, to me, this one's easy, organic. Because number one, it's just more interesting. Number two, I would be much more scared of a robot because, you know, who knows what AI could do, you know, it could go crazy. And like, I think I've mentioned this on this podcast before, but I think if an organic being ever showed up, like the chances of it being hostile to us is very little because like it, it would have like a whole universe at its disposal for any resources it may want. So that like the chances it wants to like dominate us for our resources or even slave labor, I think are minimal. I don't know. I don't know, I'd rather have a robot, just because, like, if they had any kind of disease or something, they could wipe us all out with one person showing up, you know? So uh, I think, like, first contact should be, like, no trans- transfer of... Anything. Also, if it was an organic being, that would probably mean that they somehow, like, uh, 
discovered like you know faster than light travel or wormholes or something because like if it was a robot they might have just taken the long way <laughs> like, yeah, that's true and so it, it'd be more exciting to me like the prospect of oh how did this organic creature get here they must have mastered some sort of technology mm -hmm. yeah i mean i think robots are uh, much more likely Oh, definitely much more likely. I, I just think I, I, I think a robot to me would, would be uh, because you, I mean you could send something the size of a phone at yeah. like near light speed. Yeah, that's true. Like when I think of like oh a, a robot, I think of like Terminator or something. But it probably wouldn't be. It would probably just be like you're right, like a phone or something. I, I mean, like a small uh, probe. You figure the way technology is going. Yeah, you could have like. An advanced life form in something tiny, and right. then someone could just pick it up or whatever. Okay, this one's a little tougher, maybe. Would you rather lose the ability to read or the ability to speak? I'd rather lose the ability to speak. <laughs> I think I would, too, but then I would disappoint all you podcast fans. <laughs> <laughs> When do you, when do you ever read? <laughs> I read comics all the time. Oh yeah, you do read some comics. You could just like piece together the picture by looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just guess what they're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Damn you, Spider Man. <laughs> what about you? Uh, I'd rather. Yeah, I think I'd. I'd rather uh, lose speak. I mean, you could at least still communicate with people you, could you write could down stuff write down stuff maybe learn sign language well, you, well, you, a, you know how to read and write so you, you'd have writing or you could get like one of those stephen hawking's like fuck you turd bird <laughs> i want one of those anyway yeah, really yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have a little keytar this one i'm not sure how to interpret exactly would you rather have a golden voice or a silver tongue now I'm saying that's like singing versus being charming. <laughs> yeah, because like silver tongue, like you know, the silver tongue devil. Like, d does the silver tongue mean like you're good at convincing people of things, or does it just mean like you're like good with words and like? Yeah, I think you're like smooth, smooth, yeah, and maybe have a, people stuff. have a deep vocabulary. And golden voice would just mean like maybe you can sing well or you just have a voice that people like to listen to. I, I think I would go with the silver tongue. Too. Silver tongue, yeah. yeah. Would you rather be covered in fur or covered in scales? Fur. Fur is mammalian at least. Scales is just... I think I would go with fur, but then you're going to attract furries like it's nobody's business. All right. Win-win. <laughs> oh, scale sounds interesting. I'd like to be hard and tough. Nothing to <laughs> penetrate it. <laughs> I'm bulletproof. <laughs> <laughs> but then your skin would be like all dry and nasty all the time. I don't yeah, know. That's true. Um, would you rather be in jail for a year or lose a year off your life? Lose a year off my life. That one's easy. Yeah. Well, you're losing a year anyway. Uh, yeah. Mm. Only a, one's like really yeah. boring and interspersed with rape. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One, you're just like, oh, goodbye. Year. <laughs> this is not like a horrible, like, <laughs> debacle that ruins the rest of your life. <laughs> like, that one's an easy one. <laughs> you know what? I think my butthole's a little bit too small. Just give me a year in the slammer. I mean, this one, this one's easy for me. Would you rather always be ten minutes late or always twenty minutes early? Like, I'm, I, I'm a twenty minutes early person yeah, anyway. Compulsively early. Yeah, compulsively. Like, I'm, a, I'm almost too early. Like, usually left to my own devices. Like, I'm the guy that ends up being like the only guy watching those like, you know, newbie things before the oh, movie yeah. plays. And we're like, I don't want to see this, but here I am. <laughs> this is my movie about Coca Cola. <laughs> Would you rather have one real get out of jail free card or a key that opens any door? I mean, I'm too big of a a pansy to break the law, so I don't really want the jail get out of jail free card. I I'd probably take the key that opens any door, but then like I don't know where do you use it? Yeah, you're going to go to jail if you use it. Any good. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Maybe I get, I don't know, maybe take, just take the jail free card in case you're accused of a crime you didn't yeah, commit. Yeah, yeah. 
Or somebody really pisses you off, and you're like, I got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's one free murder. <laughs> um, would you rather know the history of every object you touched or be able to talk to animals? I'll be honest. I don't really want either of these, <laughs> but I would take the animal one. I'd be cool with animals. I just think the history of the objects you touched, because uh, you could sell that stuff for a fortune if you know what the background is. But like, if people have a problem with their pet, and you can get it straight, <laughs> st- straight from the horse's mouth, literally. <laughs> just because you can understand them doesn't mean you can get them to understand you. <laughs> I think it would be creepy though with a dog, like your pet, and it is like, I sure do love it when you pet me, master, and you're That's like, true, Ugh. Yeah. so like they understand you, you understand them. I guess so. I guess so. Yeah. But the thing is, they still have small brains, so like they're not going to be like super intelligent. Exactly. Like they're going to say stupid stuff. Yeah. <laughs> he says bark. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you rather be married to a ten with a bad personality or a six with an amazing personality? That's six. Six. Uh, yeah, I think I would go that way too. Yeah. Probably lower than a six. <laughs> yeah, I'd take lower than a six with a great personality. Yeah, anybody with a shit personality is just a... Yeah. You would get, like, even if they're hot, like, you would get bored or annoyed by them very easily. Yeah. Uh, God, this thing is obsessed with the talking animals. Would you rather be able to talk to land animals, animals that fly, or animals that live underwater? I guess I see land animals. <laughs> yeah, I see them more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, yeah, I guess that was a stupid one. Um, well, that was 10 of them. Do you guys want to do more of these? Or You could always talk to a parrot. Like, they actually do talk, so there is one that flies. That you can <laughs> <talk to. laughs> they're just like, the, the ones that talk, though, they're basically just mimics, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. It'd be cool if you could just, like, be friends with a bear, though, or something. I've heard of people like that, but it usually doesn't end well. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll, cu- I'll cut it off there. That was 10 of them. Uh, AJ, do you got a second story for us? Sure, sure. Instagram model left with huge uniboob after one of her implants had, um, imp- exploded. Uh, a Canadian social media influencer who crowned herself the uniboob queen after one of her massive breast implants exploded. Uh, the 30-year-old claimed the title after one of her 38J implants Jeez. popped, which left her with one lone boob that weighed a whopping 5 kilograms on its own. The, pop, the popped implant left behind a huge mass of saggy, mm. stretched, and tattooed skin with her breasts becoming a mere shadow of themselves. Wow, this guy really... <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> hey, guys, so this is my new... This is my boob now. Basically, my breast implant popped again, so sh- she said on again. Instagram. I know. Uh, I'm having surgery to take them out next week. I'm going back... I'm going to go back uh, to a natural look. So, uh, not just my boobs, uh, but all other parts of my body. While the OnlyFans model did not reveal how or why her gigantic implant popped, she did reveal the explosion wasn't painful. She only realized that what had happened was, uh, when she heard the pop. Uh, fans expressed concern for her welfare in the comments section. Uh, one user said, your body is literally telling you to stop. Man, you guys are paying to see her do this stuff. The second added, go get that fixed. That isn't healthy. <laughs> her boob popped and they were like, that's not <laughs> you know what surprises me about these women though like i know there are some guys that are like obsessed with big boobs but even those guys like they like these like crazy boobs yeah these yeah are wild. these are gross i saw her and i got yeah i don't understand it like it's who's turned on by that that is, i mean even if she had both of them they're, they're so big that they're just grotesque yeah like that is not a sexy look it just doesn't look right does she have like face tattoos as well? Yeah, face she tattoos does. and like a ton of filler in her face. Oh, oh that's Tats another on her thing. Boobs. Like the women that get so much filler in their lips, it looks so weird and so bad. Yeah, it's hideous. That, that's another thing is like not only do women in this in America like think that all guys like like the bigger boobs, but for some reason they think we like crazy lips. <laughs> We don't. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we don't give a... Well, I don't want to get us demonetized any more than I have. But yeah, yeah. This no, no guy cares about that. None of them. Now you've I got mean, like just one boob. 
I mean, some perky lips look nice, you know, like Angelina Jolie, she had nice lips, you know, uh, Brene Zellweger had nice lips. I mean, it's one thing if a woman has naturally big lips, but the ones that do this stuff where it's yeah, very noticeable. This is, yeah. It looks uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like thin lips, but yeah, right. those, See, those big old okay. quack and duck lips. Yeah. You, you're part of the problem then. Because you're <laughs> sitting in the <laughs> Like, I don't even notice. Like, a woman could have the thinnest lips possible. Right. I, I wouldn't even... I'll notice. Because then their gums look huge compared to their lips. <laughs> it just looks weird. <laughs> what? Yeah, they got like... The gum to lip ratio. Yeah, though. it's nasty. Sorry, I don't mean to see nasty, but it's just uh, not for me. <laughs> I don't know if aesthetically uh, I don't like it. Just like, I don't know. Well, if there's any ladies out there with thin lips, I have apparently no standards when it comes to lips. <laughs> <laughs> Need those 36 double J's. <laughs> Man, she does just have one big boob. Yep. <laughs> isn't uh, uh, Kung Pao, isn't there a woman with one boob? And she like, it throws her up down. One? Yeah, well, she has one. Uh, and there's that um, what's that Arnold Schwarzenegger one where the chick has three boobs oh Total Recall Total Recall yeah mm. <laughs> uh, yeah she has the uniboob <laughs> Kung Pao is such a funny movie it's it's so ridiculous I remember when I watched it for the first time I was like how do they make a movie like this <laughs> how do they do that like, it's so absurd it's such a weird movie <laughs> I'm so surprised like nobody's done that again where they take like a you know, footage from an old movie like that mm -hmm. and, and put, you know, because yeah. I think there's a lot of potential there. Right. Like, yeah, Kung Pao. Also, like, Kung Pao, like, there's probably, like, five to ten movie minutes of that movie, like, before it gets to that part that are, like, so bad, you almost, like, think about turning the movie right. off. Don't turn it off, though, if you've never seen it. Like, <laughs> at least get to the part where they start mixing in the old footage because that's where it gets hilarious. But yeah, that I love that movie because the humor is just so random. It like yeah. it goes to these places that you would never expect. It mm -hmm. just throws out these lines at you that you're like, "What?" I wonder what the budget was on that movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because I'm thinking they probably picked that film because the studio probably owned it, so they probably didn't even have to pay to use that old footage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing it was a pretty cheap movie to make. It looked cheap, cheap to make. <laughs> it did look like it. They just like green screen some of, green screening him in on like different places. Right. Yeah, that's a lot of nuts. <laughs> <laughs> you see the outtakes for that scene. Yeah, <laughs> it's like that guy was really good at not breaking character, but that one got him. <laughs> oh man, like. I, I wish more people like appreciated that movie so that more could be made in that vein. It's just it's such a ridiculous movie, but it's so funny. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu, I guess Manifesto Round Two. Ah, uh, the big bust, New Zealand. Uh, his story that was, was the big my bust. story. The big bust. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was one big bust. <laughs> Speaking of big busts, uh, New Zealand finds what was it? Three and a half tons of cocaine in the ocean. So apparently, someone had dropped it there. It was like a drop point for someone else to pick up. And they found it and, and took it in. But they said they figured it was probably going to Australia. It's worth probably in the neighborhood of $500 million. And they said there was enough cocaine probably to service the entire Australian market for a year. Oh. Huh. That's impressive. So sad that that cocaine didn't get to its... I know. <laughs> On the upside, uh, those tortoises that have the plastic straws stuck in their nose <laughs> oh, yeah. but now <laughs> can make use yeah. of them. <laughs> they can do something with it. <laughs> but you think probably like every year there's a, been a similar shipment that was like successful. Right? Oh, yeah. So it's not... You're not stopping anything. You you've probably raised the price of cocaine in Australia yeah. for for a year, but yeah. Did you guys see the trailer for that Cocaine Bear movie that's coming out? I I didn't see a trailer, but I saw the uh, like a flyer, a poster. 
I, f- I feel like it's going to be one of those movies that people go, oh, this looks so silly. It's got to be great. And then they watch it and they're just like, oh, not very good. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, there was a story, right, where like a cocaine or a bear got into a shit. Right. Apparently there was a re- it, real story where like a bear got into cocaine. But uh, <laughs> that's I don't, where the resemblance to the true story stops. stops. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Watching the trailer, it looked pretty silly. So what I'll, I'll to put the- it on a maybe list. What happened to the bear in real life? Like, did he well, die? Or? Well, I think he rampaged for a little while and then, like, had a heart attack. Oh, no. He started, like, a nightclub in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Bears. So, um, all the aquatic life in, by New Zealand or whatever, they're, they're just uh, <laughs> snorting. Cover. I, I saw another one the other day where, like, one of those big, like, sea turtles was um he had like rope like he was kind of tangled in and it had like big blocks of cocaine and he was oh. just like hauling it across the ocean oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna arrest that turtle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where are you going with that uh so i got an article here like have you guys heard like they have like like a bunch of uh weird vending machines in japan mm-hmm. they have women's underwear in there. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if this list ha- has that. I've heard of that, though. But this just has, like, a list of some of the, like, uh, weird vending machines. Uh, uh, so, number one, toys. Do you remember the supermarket toys of the United States? Uh, there were stickers in there, tattoos, little egg-shaped bubble containers that opened up with rings, uh, candies, or even mini figurines. Japan vending machines aren't that much different with some uh, with some selling anime figurines. It's a very typical scene in Akihabara. And they have ma- manga, too. There are also some toy vending machines at JR stations in Tokyo. Uh, these sell unique and funny figurines along with popular characters and more. The sale of toys out of vending machines has uh, only increased in Japan. And you can find specialty items from specific areas like Akita Inu Plus from Akita Prefecture. So that one's not very weird. Uh, number two, alcohol. Uh, in the streets of Japan, drinking is allowed in public, and there are large parties uh, in the streets with people drinking and enjoying sh- cherry blossoms at their peak during prime cherry blossom viewing season. That sounds fun. I think that would just make culture better. <laughs> uh, because Japan is considered a paradise of drinking, uh, there are alcoholic and to the rest of us, uh, weird vending machines as well. You can find anything from beer to sake in these vending machines. Of course, you cannot just buy booze from a vending machine. Uh, you do have to scan your ID card. This is required before you can purchase anything, as this system uh, is in place to prevent minors from purchasing alcohol. Oh, you know kids are stealing their parents' IDs. For sure. For sure. Yeah, I mean, how often do you check for your ID? Like, if they just took it for a day and can't put it back. Yeah, you probably never noticed. Yeah. Uh, next, bread. Have you ever seen a bread vending machine anywhere? What a delicious and perfect food to enjoy. There are mostly sweet breads on sale. For example, melon pan and donuts are the main products sold. These weird vending machines are particularly common among uh, college students and with parents and kids alike. There's nothing like a little snack to help little kids and adults ward off that hung- that hangry. Uh, next, fresh seafood. <laughs> Man, uh, these oh, might yeah. be okay in Japan, but if if you're in America and you find a vending machine with seafood, you yeah. are 100% getting sick. Yeah. I feel like this is like that future ramen where Fry eats that gas oh, station worms. sandwich. <laughs> 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 um, would you eat fresh seafood out of a vending machine in Japan? Or anywhere else, for that matter. Uh, The famous fish market of Tokyo is called Tsukiji, and it's in the center of culinary culture. Here, wholesalers, small retailers, and restaurants gather. A newly opened vending machine in uh, Tsukiji even began selling fresh seafood this year. Seafood comes out frozen like other prepared food, but all you have to do is microwave it before you eat it. Ugh. Wait, so it's not fresh, fresh. Also, who's in their right mind would want to microwave fresh fish? Anyhow, if this appeals to you, the vending machine is located outside of the seafood restaurant called Hakai Banya. 
This next one is basically just a lie. Uh, it says guns, but it's, it says, yep, rifles to be exact. If this isn't the king of weird vending machines, what even is? You can find this vending machine in front of the game meat restaurant Kimono in Osaka. It's not uh, sold and actually just on display, but it does stand out uh, as any pass where I can see the rifle and bullets. Actually, isn't Japan famous for like it being really hard to get a gun license and actually own a gun? I don't know. I thought that was the case. I think so because, like, any time like they bring up like how we have terrible like gun violence statistics in the U.S., they're like, "Oh, Japan's like, you know, they ha- they have like a couple gun deaths a year because it's like so hard to like own a gun or whatever." Next, uh, this one actually reminds me of my childhood. Tobacco. Are you old enough to remember the cigarette machines of your? your? I certainly am. Are there still any around in the U.S.? Uh, they're alive and well in Japan. There are dozens of types of tobacco sold out of these machines, and you can also buy tobacco at convenience stores. If you want to buy a tobacco box from a vending machine, you too will need to verify your age. Uh, you will need a TASPO identification card. When you submit your age verification and documents to a convenience store or the official TASPO website, your card will be sent to your house via mail. This is a safe and secure system that is in place as minors are not allowed uh, to buy tobacco in Japan. Is it, I don't know if it's still the case, but I think like smoking is like really popular in Japan. Like Everybody smokes, or at least that used to be the case. I don't know. I yeah, mean, I've never been there. I, I, I know you're right that it was pretty big, but I don't know if it still is. Mm. And then uh, edible insects. Uh, first thought, live insects, is it turns out that most of them, uh, turns out that most of them are fried, and you can get crickets, giant water bugs, tarantulas, and scorpions. Have you ever eaten a scorpion? Uh, for the Japanese, it's not common to eat insects as a snack. However, if you are brave and want to try them, Japan is the place to find it. There is no weird vending machines more weird than fresh seafood. Um, uh, you first have to microwave. Uh, would you try... Oh, for some reason it like repeated that part of their other article. Anyway, like, the, I guess these are kind of weird, but... They didn't even mention the one you yeah. talked about because I know it's real. I don't even remember where I heard it, but yeah, they definitely ha- have one where you can buy women's underwear. <laughs> yeah, used underwear. <laughs> used underwear. <laughs> it's like it's so convenient. <laughs> I've been wanting one of these. You don't even need your ID for this. Kids can get them. <laughs> what about those uh, cigarette machines in America? Like, do they? How did people use those? Like, did kids just walk up to them and just use them? I mean, I'm trying to... I remember one in a restaurant. Yeah, there was... They used to be in, like, uh, a restaurant when we were kids. And, yeah, it didn't have any sort of ID on those ones. Like, uh, I mean... You just put your money in and pulled it Yeah, you just Mm. put your coins in or whatever and you got your pack. But then people were smoking like fucking chimneys in the restaurant too. Oh my god. Yeah. What that's when they still had, you know, the smoking non and non-smoking section, but it's What's like What's the point of a non-smoking? I know. Thing? It's like that smoke's going to get to you no yeah. matter what. I don't even remember like when they finally got rid of that. I mean, I, I made do you remember that when you were a kid like smoking and non-smoking section? It seemed like when I was a teenager, like around or close to when I was like maybe Yeah. Yeah, I'd say around early to maybe late 90s. Yeah, it had to be somewhere around there, right? Yeah. I actually remember, like, I was actually at um, the restaurant when they um, finally took the cigarette machine out of there. Oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, I think I think it was, like, I don't know if their reasoning was, like, they figured it was too easy for kids because... <laughs> You know, yeah. like I said, there was no idea. I mean, I figure, like, it being in a restaurant there, like, like if any kids were using it, it's because their parent was like, hey, Johnny, go get me a pack yeah. of smokes, you know? Well, you know, like, our dad talks about when he was a kid, and, like, parents would just send kids to go buy cigarettes. Like, yeah. go buy me some cigarettes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. These times, they are a-changing. <laughs> uh, AJ, story number three. All right. Uh, Let's see here. All right. This one's wild. Um, Horrific reality TV show once tortured a man for 15 months. 
If you think the contestants on I'm a Celebrity or Survivor have it tough, wait until you hear about one poor chap who had to go through an, a Japanese reality TV show. The Squid Game style sh uh, show saw a man tortured for 15 months, with social media users calling the show's premise sick. You can, oh, uh, Susanoo Denpa Shonen. Uh, which roughly translates to Do Not Proceed Crazy Youth, ran from 1998 until 2002. It placed contestants in incredibly extreme situations and observed their reactions. While the show was no stranger to some very questionable challenges, the most controversial involved struggling comedian Tomoki Hamatsu, uh, better known as Nasubi. Nasubi translates to eggplant, uh, which was the graphic used to cover up the comedian's genitals when he was naked on air. <laughs> Uh, dubbed the most evil live stream ever, the game show began by effectively kidnapping Nasubi, ordering him to strip, and then left him in an apartment with just a bathroom and an empty kitchen. The challenge was to test Nasubi's endurance and ability to survive in such cruel conditions. Uh, without anything to entertain himself, the only thing the apartment had were a bunch of magazines that, with sweepstakes in them. Uh, the point of the game show was that Nasubi was challenged to raise 1 million yen using these sweepstakes. Once the producers explained the concept and left him to it, Nasubi said, Are you for real? The sweepstakes were also the only way to feed himself. Before his bets started paying off, he was only given a tiny piece of bread to survive on, and even that stopped after the first few weeks, after which he was made to survive entirely on the sweepstakes. The door to the apartment wasn't locked during the show, but Nasubi explained on podcast the, uh, This American Life that he would have had to go outside naked and ask for help if he wanted to leave. However, Nasubi added, I don't think that's what kept me in there. The only thing I really have to say is that I, I said I'd do it and I, and I do what I say. Uh, the comedian endured an entire 365 days in the apartment after finally being able to reach the monetary goal. Uh, as a celebration for his efforts, producers sent Nasubi uh, on a gifted trip to Korea. Uh, enjoying his rewards, Nasubi celebrated his victory with a few days before things really took a turn. Producers then t uh, took him to another apartment and demanded he took, took off his clothes and the challenge was to raise money uh, again. Uh, some 16 million people around the world tuned in every week to watch Nasubi desperately struggle to make money. For four, for four more grueling months, the process repeated as Nasubi was challenged to keep raising money and the, and provided, and the provided sweepstakes to pay for uh, a flight home. Uh, upping their quest from regular tickets to first class tickets, producers wanted to stretch out as much footage from Nasubi as possible. Nasubi eventually raised enough money to fly back home to Tokyo. Upon arrival, producers then placed Nasubi in a room that looked exactly like the, uh, like the other apartments he'd become used to. Knowing the game now, the comedian began taking off his clothes. However, the room was not part of an apartment, but actually a box on the stage of a game show in front of an entire live audience. Once completely naked, the walls of the box room came down and revealed the comedian in front of thousands of people ending the game. Nasubi had no idea his actions were being live-streamed the entire time, uh, with graphics and uh, sound effects commonly mocking the comedian. Left without sufficient food, no external communication, and stripped of his clothes for 15 whole months, Nasubi's mental and physical health quickly deteriorated. Uh, speaking to Style Koriyama, Nasubi revealed everything was harsh. Every day was like hell back then. He added, I'd rather die than feel this. Uh, while Nasubi went off the radar for some time following the game show, he now regularly posts on his Twitter and YouTube accounts. <laughs> Man, I hope uh, hope he got something out of it, like fame, money, stuff like that. I mean, he's gotten some fame. I mean, he has to have some fame if that many people were watching, but yeah. that's crazy. I hope he gets money. <laughs> oh, yeah, no kidding. Yeah, it is crazy. But this story reminded me of another like headline I saw this week, and I didn't read the article, but I figured I would now. Uh, Netflix's Squid Game reality show was reportedly an inhumane disaster. Um, Squid Game, Netflix's 2021 drama about a deadly competition for a massive cash prize, captured hearts for its critical stance on capitalism. Now, Netflix is creating a rea reality spinoff called Squid Game The Challenge, and it seems that its filming conditions aren't far from the inhumane conditions presented in the original show. With, I, I'm thinking they're probably quite a ways away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, with several contestants speaking out about unsafe filming environments and claiming that the game was rigged. Squid Game The Challenge features 456 participants competing for a massive um, 
$4.56 million prize. While the participants in the upcoming 10-episode series compete in children's games similar to those in the original Squid Game, Netflix has been careful to let viewers know that the worst fate is going home empty-handed. Uh, but based on multiple reports, conditions on the show have been difficult to say the least. Gathered in a former air hangar near London for filming, unpaid participants in Squid Game's reality spinoff reportedly faced freezing temperatures and fatigue. They had been woken up as early as 3.30 a.m. and remained on set for up to nine hours, unable to move for long stretches of time due to the game they were playing. At least ten participants collapsed during the first day of filming. Uh, medics were called to the set repeatedly, with one contestant even referring to the set as a war zone. Uh, people were dropping like flies. The second, um, quote, the second time the song played, I saw in my left peripheral vision that this girl was swaying. Then she just buckled and you couldn't hear uh, her head actually hit the ground, contestant Marlene told Variety. But then someone came on the microphone and said to hold our positions because the game is not paused. After that, people were dropping like flies. Several contest contestants also claimed that the game was rigged, citing the fact that a few in influencer contestants were pre-selected to move on to new rounds regardless of their results, according to Rolling Stone. Two contestants also told Rolling Stone that Netflix, which flew international contestants into London for filming, had already booked their return flights before the game games began. And these flights later turned out to occur, occur right after the contestants' eliminations. Uh, quote, it really wasn't a game show, it was a TV show, and uh, we were basically extras in a TV show, an anonymous contestant told Rolling Stone. Netflix, Netflix first announced casting for the spinoff in June, and players began reporting injuries shortly after filming began. We gave the original Squid Game's first seasons a 9 in our review, calling it one of the most exciting series to hit Netflix in some time. Um, do you think this show actually ever comes out, or do you think these controversies will prevent it? I don't know. It sounds like it was just fake bullshit. It sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> like the whole point of the Squid Games was to talk about how shitty that whole thing is, and like now they want to make it. <laughs> like, like hey, let's let's do the thing that we just did that commentary <laughs> about that was so evil. I mean, I guess it gets the point across again. Like, oh, look what these people are willing to do for money. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Getting up at three thirty, it's <laughs> torture. Yeah, that's definitely not, like a white person problem. Yeah, but not moving for nine hours—that's that is torture. Like to not move, that's rough. I don't know. I have to get up at five every morning for work, and then I'm strapped to a desk. For <laughs> how many? Around. Inhumanity. <laughs> it does seem seem like inhumanity. Oh, <laughs> uh, are we done? <laughs> Well, we are over the hour mark. You guys got anything else you want to add before we wrap up? Uh, I've got a depressing one, but I don't think we need to finish with that. <laughs> Houston Cougars are number two in the nation. What's that? The Houston Cougars are number two in the nation. You're bragging about number two? Yeah, I'll take it. Why not? Who, who, who's number one? You never bragged Purdue. about number two. Purdue. Yeah, they're pretty good. They got this uh, seven foot four guy who's just like Yao Minging his way around college basketball. He's just too big for anybody to stop. Houston doesn't have any... No, we don't have anybody like any that. Any freak tallies. <laughs> we don't have anybody 7-4 or above. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I think next week will probably be our Ant-Man and Wasp Quantumania review if everything goes to plan. Uh, but we thank everybody very much uh, uh, for joining us here today. Uh, if you will, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and to the podcast and your podcast service of choice. Uh, uh, give us thumbs up, positive reviews, c good, uh, or even bad comments. We'll read them all. Um, and why not come over and, and talk to us on Twitter as well? Guys, where could people find you on Twitter? At a name for this too, and that's the number two. At unsolicited S U G. And you can, of course, find me at Zach Jones Lives. That's Z A C H J O N E S L I V E. And that is going to do it for all of our shenanigans and poppycock this week. Please, please, please tune in again next week. Bye, guys. Take care. Yeah, have a good one.